Hopeland. I am Gabby, and I'm so excited to be here today to welcome all of us to another uh, another sermon of Let's Try This Again. I hope it's been blessing you, and I know that Pishon has a great word for us today. If you are joining us for the first time, please text the word NEW, N-E-W, to 323 405 Three two three two. Um, enjoy today's service.
All right, I hope everybody enjoyed worship today. Um, it's great to be here, great to be preaching the word, great to be ministering to you. We're in part four today of our sermon series, Let's Try This Again. And so let me, let me pray, and then we're gonna turn um, into our Bibles, and uh, we're gonna read the word, and I'm real excited to, to teach you today from the word of God. So let me pray. Father. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. And we pray that you speak to us. We pray that you minister to us. God, we, we sit at your feet. Uh, we sit at your feet. We sit at your table to receive um, spiritual food today. Um, speak to us, feed us, change us. Uh, we open up our hearts to your living word. And we thank you uh, for life transformation, for spiritual formation in our spirit, in our soul today. And thank you, Lord, for the renewing of our mind. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here we go. Let's try this again. And, and I just wanna share some things and then we're gonna turn in our Bibles um, to the book of, of Psalms in a second. Uh, but I just wanna open up to today with th this thought that, that in the heart, in the mind, in the plan, in the purpose of God is renewal, and restoration, that God will restore you, God will renew you, God will reconcile, reconcile you. He will do it again. Um, this is this is just in the heart of God. This is this is part of the plan of God. If, uh, the word restore, that word, um, we're going to look at it in, in the Hebrew. It's it's a word um, shub in the Hebrew. That is in the Bible. It's like 
close to the one of the top 10 words used in the scripture, okay, in the Old Testament. Um, it is in there. It is um, um, blatantly in the heart and plan of God. If you look at even any narrative in scripture and the, the people that, that um, lost their way and came back, you got the story of the prodigal son where the father restores him to his rightful place as a son and gives him his authority back, gives him, uh, welcomes him back into his arms, welcomes him back into the house of the father. I mean, this is the heart of God. So when we talk about, let's try this again, this is God saying to us, hey, let's try this again, okay? And so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this in the word, but here it is. I'm, I got some scriptures here, but I'm telling you, this doesn't exhaust that this is really the heart of God for humanity. It is the heart of our Heavenly Father for you. And it is God's heart for the church to be this way to the communities um, she is in, right? The bride, wherever the bride is, the, the assembly, the local church, this is part of God's heart. And it ought to be and should be in our heart. As, as individuals, as um, families, as a church family, as a church community, that, that we can try this again. God is the God of the second chance, okay? He just doesn't stop there, but, but you, I'm just trying to make a point here. He will give you another chance, all right? So let's try this again. So here we go, Psalm 23, verse three. Uh, it says this, it says, he restores my soul. There it is. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restores, okay? In the heart of God is renewal. He renews us, okay? In, in Espanol, it's el nos um, renueva. He re renews us, you know? Uh, the Bible says if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Um, he renews us. That that's, This is what he does. He we, we don't um, hit a dead end in God ever. He, I mean, when we get off course, he will get us back. He will reposition us. He will recalibrate according to his plan. And so el nos renueva, okay? Um, here it is, the word restore in the Hebrew. This is what it means. Um, this is what it means here. He restores my soul. Shoot. It means to, to return back, to go back to, to return to the starting point that, that we, you know, the Bible says that he came to seek and to save that which is lost. So, so, so we've all been lost outside of God and here he comes and he has come to, 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 to find us, if you will, to, for us to find our path in God. He renews, he repositions, he brings us back to return to the starting point, to revive. This is what it means to spiritually, re, spiritual renewal, okay? To make new again. This is what the word means. So, and, and in this word, it, it, it's twofold. It does mean that God will renew, that God will return that when we call upon him, he will come, that he will restore us, he will do a work in us. But it also means us returning to God. When we return to God, he restores all to us. It, 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 it's both ways. When we draw nigh to God, he draws nigh to us. When we return to him, he restores us. That's what he does. He restores. He rebuilds, he refreshes, okay? He restores my soul. Here's another Psalm, okay? Psalm 51, verse 12, okay? Um, it says, restore to me, everybody say restore. Uh, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Now this Psalm was written and it was as a result of David falling into sin with Bathsheba. And I mean, he did some, he did some, he, he did some dirt, okay? David, King David did some dirt, okay? 
in, in most of you, I'm assuming, uh, would know the story, but he, um, he has Bathsheba's um, husband murdered. He has sex with her, and um, that's, that's, he did some dirt, okay? He was not married to her, um, and he comes to God, and he says, God, restore me. Restore me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. And God saw his brokenness. He was, he was legit when he came to God. He, he, he was broken. He owned it. He, he, um, he was repentant. He returned to God and God restored the joy of God's salvation to him and God upheld him with his generous spirit. Uh, all right, here is my first point, is when we return to God, he restores us. The, by definition, it's the same word in the Hebrew, restore, the Hebrew word shub. When we return, God restores. So I'm here, I'm, I'm saying to you today, you can return to God right now. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where your thoughts are at, where your emotional state is, where your relationship with God is exactly. But right now in this moment, you can return to God and he will restore his salvation to you. You can return and he will restore. When we return, he restores. All right, let's look at this again. Let's look at another one. Here we go. Isaiah 58 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58, we're going through a good amount of scriptures today, but Isaiah 58 verse 12 says this, those from whom you shall build, those, sorry, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach. There it is, repair the restorer of streets to dwell in. Now this is a messianic prophecy. Repairer of the breach is all capitalized. The restorer of streets to dwell in is capitalized. It's speaking of uh, one layer of this, of this scripture. It's speaking of Christ, that that's who he is. That is who he is. And he's saying even from among you shall, um, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And this is, like I said in the beginning, this is the heart of God for his people. That even when Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple destroyed, God's people ravaged that God's heart because of their sin. They opened up the door and it just, you know, and, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But God was like, I am going to raise up from among you those that will rebuild, those that will raise up what's been broken, those that will repair what has been ripped apart, those that will bring restoration of the, of the, the restore of streets to dwell in. God restores us so we can restore others. This is, this is how God operates. This is the heart of God. This is the purpose of God in your life is to restore you so you can then be somebody that restores. God redeemed us so we can redeem and bring redemption to the people in our life and the environments we live in. So the whole series this month, let's try this again. I want you to know that's what God is saying to you. Whatever area of your life it is, that's, that's just how he does it. I'm just pulling a couple scriptures out here, but this is everywhere, okay? He restored Gideon when Gideon was hiding in a wine press, restored him and raised him up to be a leader, all right? And, 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 to, and to raise up an army, okay? He restored David when David sinned, restored him, restore, restore said, restore to me the joy of my salvation, okay? And, and the Bible says in, in Psalm 51, in that context, he says, a broken and contrite heart, he will not despise. He restored him. He brought him back. Man, when you return, God restores, okay? And, and that's, um, 
That word shub is also, it's used when we repent, when we turn to God. That's what we're doing. We, I mean, that's what repentance does. It brings restoration. Whenever God's people turn to him, when they were at their worst, when they were, you know, um, worshiping other idols and all kind of stuff. I mean, there's so many examples in the Old Testament of God's people like getting off track constantly, it seemed. And when they would return, God would restore. And he's gonna do that for you in Christ. He's gonna do that for you. He's gonna do that for you. And he says, man, those in Isaiah 58, 12, those from among you shall build the old waste places. Look at, this is how God operates. God does not start with things that are all put together. God doesn't go, hmm, um, I wonder who in that family really has it together. I wanna start with them, right? He's not going, hmm, you know, once they, once they get their act together, I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch their life. Um, no, God is a restorer. He, 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 he takes brokenness and, and, and brings completion to it. He takes um, sickness and restores health. He takes um, a sinner and restores them to, to, to be a saint. He, he takes the forgotten and accepts them. He takes the depressed and restores joy. He takes the anxious and the fearful and restores boldness and confidence in Christ. He takes the fatherless and touches them and becomes a father to them. He is a father to the fatherless in his holy habitation. God is attracted to what is broken, to what has a void, to what is messed up. He is attracted to it. He's like, I'm gonna touch them. I'm gonna move on them. I am going to die for them when they are lost in their trespasses and sins. God starts with brokenness. He begins, he, he moves. When the, where there's darkness, he comes and restores light to it, okay? This is what he does. This is God's method of love and restoration and, 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 and bringing uh, restoration to your heart and soul. This is what he does. This is what he does. This is how he does it. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. Okay, the restorer of streets to dwell in. When we return to God, he restores us. All right, so here we go. Galatians chapter six, let's go to the New Testament. Galatians chapter six, verse one. This is the apostle Paul writing um, to the church in Galatia. And this is the last chapter in that book. And this is the first verse in the last chapter. And it says, uh, brethren, if a man is overtaken, all right, in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Okay, this is the heart of God. This is how he operates. Let's read it one more time. Galatians 6.1, brethren, he's talking to the church. He's talking to our brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to the church, how the church is to respond when people get overtaken by sin. He says, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Here it is, my next point. Simple, spiritual people restore people. Okay, spiritual people bring restoration. Okay, so look at, we are in Christ, spiritual people. All right, I talked a bit about this last week that prayer is a spiritual act and prayer brings us into the spirit 
Prayer is a spiritual operation. Prayer is um, spiritual engagement. It gets us in the spirit. We receive wisdom and all that. If you missed last week, go back and watch it, listen to it. But here we go. We are spiritual people. In Espanol, uh, somos personas espirituales. Okay, we are spiritual people. I love to say that in Spanish. Um, it just, it just, because uh, it's, because it's kind of easy for me. Uh, some other phrases are a little more difficult. But I'm gonna say it again. Somos personas espirituales. Somos personas espirituales. We are spiritual people, and spiritual people restore. So look, spiritual people aren't snooty and prideful and walking around with their nose up in the air like they're all that. That's not spiritual. Spiritual people aren't the outlandish, um, um, wild and demonstratively maybe look like they're spiritual. No, spiritual people have fruit and a track record of helping to restore people to who they are in Christ. That is spiritual, okay? And so when somebody's overtaken in a trespass, this is what we do. This is what Hopeland Church does. This is what we do. This is how we operate. When somebody um, gets caught up, falls off the horse, whatever you want to call it, um, or the wagon <laughs> falls off the wagon, um, you know, uh, we who are spiritual restore, okay? And so some people, you know, they're caught in a trespass. They get, they get caught up. They, they, um, as, as the Bible says here, overtaken. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to dive into this verse here for a little bit. Okay. Um, but this word trespass, um, it really means, um, to deviate from the truth. Okay. In our walk with God and in community, there's going to be people that are walking with God and they get distracted. They get, they fall into sin. They, they, whatever, I mean, whatever you want to call it, they backslide or they, they, um, they deviate from the truth. They, 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 another literal definition of this word trespass is to slip up. Okay. Um, and sometimes this can be where they are vulnerable and, and, and almost at times, um, um, they can get deceived and almost like it's unconscious and non-deliberate at times. And, and those people that get caught up, those people that um, fall into sin or they slip up or they deviate from the truth or they fall away, is another definition, they fall away after being um, close beside the Lord. We who are spiritual restore, spiritual people restore people, okay? And that word spiritual, man, it's, it's, um, it's relating to the spirit realm. It's, it's people that aren't carnal, people that aren't in some religious, hateful attack mode because somebody falls. But spiritual people, by the way of the Holy Spirit, have the ability in Christ to impart faith into others that are doubting. They know how to restore it also means uh, spiritual people have the grace to reveal Christ to others when they have fallen, to reveal the Christ, the forgiver, Christ, the deliverer, Christ, the healer, Christ, the restorer of our soul. All right, so spiritual people, this is this, this thing that you can't see with the natural eye, but they have the innate grace and ability in Christ to operate in the spirit realm, to see what others don't see and, and maybe even say what others aren't saying because they're operating by the Holy Spirit and they have the, the grace to impart faith where there's doubt, to impart hope where there's despair, to impart healing where there's sickness. We who are spiritual restore. Once again, folks, spiritual people restore people. We are spiritual people. And spiritual people aren't goofy. Spiritual people aren't super spiritual. Spiritual people restore others. Those are the spiritual ones. Um, sometimes we look at spirituality and spiritual people 
as kind of like out there kind of people. Like they're a little out there. Um, and scripturally, it says, you who are spiritual, restore. So spiritual people have fruit of blessing others spiritually. Like, like there's fruit. There's just fruit. It's obvious. It's, it's if, if they were a tree, man, that fruit is saying, man, look at those people that they have impacted. Look at the growth of the people around them. Look at not just that person, but look at the blessing that has come on others as a result of their life. That is spiritual, okay? And so there are those that are caught in a trespass. And spiritual, once again, is the, is, is the, is the ability, the grace to impart faith. It's to impart faith, not to judge, condemn, and to blame, and to accuse, and to gossip. That's not spiritual. That is the opposite of spiritual, which is carnal or natural or earthly. It, 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 and it's, 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 it's the flesh. It is not spirit. And when you speak of spiritual, you're speaking of if in, in this, in the invisible realm. Like it, it's, it's, not, it's not seen with the natural eye, but, but it has a spiritual power and effect on, on the outcome of people's spiritual lives, all right? And so um, the Bible says in Revelation that the devil is called the accuser of our brethren. So the devil is an accuser. And the Bible talks about how the flesh is like um, fault finding. So you know that you're in the flesh or somebody's in the flesh if they're constantly talking about the negatives and the weaknesses and the mistakes and the um, and uh, the pitfalls of people around them. like that is not spiritual that is not I'm not it's not discernment that is carnal it's earthly and it's unhealthy okay but spirit once again you who are spiritual, restore, that we carry in our spirit as Christ followers. Let's try this again. You know, there, there's hope. Like, let, let's do this again. All right, let, let, let's, let's give it another shot. Let's, let, let, let's get up in the morning. Let's pray again. Let's, let's, let's get in that gathering with, with God's people again. Let's worship again. Let's get back to it again. Okay, and it says to restore such one in the spirit, right? It's a spiritual, the spirit of gentleness. The spirit of gentleness, not the spirit of harshness, not the spirit of condemnation, but the spirit. This is people that are caught up in a sin that they fall off into transgression. We who are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. All right, we're gonna look at this. Now this gentleness is in Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23, the, it's a fruit of the spirit, okay? When it talks about the fruit of the spirit, so it's, it's a word temperate, okay? Gentleness, okay? And I'm gonna read this definition here. This is the Greek definition of gentleness, it means displaying the right blend of force and reserve. Okay, this is gentleness. It means strength in gentleness, okay? Because some people say, well, you can't be gentle because then they're not gonna listen. No, or, or don't be soft, right, or, or weak. The gentleness is not weakness. By definition, it speaks of a strength that is harnessed in, in the right spirit, okay? That it can come with some force and some truth, but the spirit of it is to restore. The spirit of the truth that is spoken is to renew. 
the spirit of maybe the hard words, the convicting words, the the truth is absolute. And when it comes, we need to make sure it's in the spirit of gentleness. Let, you know, we need to speak the truth in love. So it's not so many times Christians, they, they, they get the truth right, but the spirit of it is wrong. The, the absolute truth of what the word says about somebody in their sin can be right. But when the spirit of it is wrong, it is wrong, right? The, the, we need to speak the truth in love and restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, okay? Now, this is what it means by definition. This is not my words. This is the definition of this word. It means avoiding unnecessary harshness, okay? Yet without compromising, without, yet without compromising. Avoiding, this is this, we need the spirit of God for this, that the spirit of God, the fruit of gentleness, of temperance, is avoiding unnecessary harshness toward our brother or sister, yet not compromising or being too slow to use the necessary strength and force of the truth, okay? Um, And look at, by definition, okay, this is never something um, humanity accomplishes. In our humanity, we cannot do this because it is the Spirit of God. We need to yield to the fruit of gentleness when our brothers and sisters are are caught up in something and they fall. We, our goal is restoration, okay? Our goal, we need to be in the spirit in order to restore people to their destiny, okay? We need to be in the spirit to restore people to their destiny. This, let's try this again. This ought to be a theme for you this year, for your own self, your own walk with God, your own journey with God, and for those around you. Let's let's get back in here. Let's try this again. That this should be your heart towards your spouse, towards that one thing that they keep doing that's getting on your nerves. Let's try this again. I'm with you. We can do this, right? Religious people accuse and, and find fault with others. It's called fault finding. That is unhealthy. That's not spiritual. No, fault finding. And that's religion mixed with some kind of flesh unforgiveness, bitterness, vengeance, all that is not Holy Spirit. That is the flesh. And at times that stuff is demonic. It is straight up demonic. It is devilish. It is not of God. We who are spiritual restore. Spiritual people restore and look for mercy in every situation. Religious people accuse and find fault in every situation. Okay, so we can restore others when we are approaching people in situations from a spiritual place in Christ, that is that is our goal. We're not trying to, put, when somebody falls in the mud, we're not trying to put our foot on their head and push them further into it. I mean, we're trying to reach down and pull them out. I'm not trying to get in there with you, but I'm gonna reach down and pull you out. I'm not trying to push you into it, and I'm not trying to compromise myself and get in it with you, but I'm gonna pull out my hand and I'm gonna help pull you up. I, 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 because I'm spiritual, that, that, that's what how we ought to be and we ought to pull people up out of stuff, okay? All right, that's that one verse right there, Galatians 6, 6, chapter one. Here it is, the definition of the word restore. This is what it means in the Greek, guys. Prepare and perfect for his or her full destination or use. That's what you're doing is when you restore people, when you're restorative, when you're hopeful, when you're spiritual towards your brothers and sisters, you are preparing and helping to mature and perfect them for their full destination or use. You are part of them fulfilling God's purpose. That is our goal. When we restore, we bring into their proper condition, whether it's the first time or after a lapse. This is what restore means in the Greek. Whether it's the first time or after a lapse, man, I'm gonna get you back into position. 
I'm going to get you back into Christ. I'm going to get you back in the house of God. I'm going to get you back in the community. I'm here to get you back in the word. I'm here to get you back into prayer to restore to the condition, right? To It means to exactly fit, adjust, to be in good working order. Once again, I really want to look at this, the word restore in the Greek. This is it. This is what we do. Why? It's who God is. This is why the church ought to be this. This is why Christ followers ought to be. This ought to be the main thing. I mean, everything in the Bible, Jesus came to reconcile, re, again, connect us again to God. Connect us again to, to, to restore favor. That's what the word reconcile in the Bible. Look up the word reconcile in your Bible. It's everywhere and there's a lot. It's all over. It's Christ. It's what he did. He reconciled. He restored favor to us when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. And you are spiritual restorer. We, we, this isn't just about being nice, quote unquote, nice Christians. This is about destiny and purpose inside of people. This is what the church does. This is what we do. We restore favor to others. We, we restore them to their rightful position in place. Some people, they fall out of position and we're not there to just to, to keep them out, to push them out, to condemn them, to judge them. Uh, we are there to restore them. Okay. And that's what it means that whether restore in the Greek, whether it's their first time or after a lapse, we are here to restore I ran into somebody, a young person here in, in the neighborhood, and they haven't been to church in a while. And they were like, oh, man. Um, uh, I just drive by and say, hey, what's up, man? And uh, they, they, they just immediately were like, oh, man, I, I'm not doing what I need to be doing. I'm like, look, man, there is no judgment from me. I am here for you. You got my phone number. I love you. And that's it. All right. And then they were like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's just, I know I need to, you know, I need to be where I need to be. And I'm like, cool. Uh, but I love you, man. I, I, you know, I'm here to restore you. I'm not here to, to point my finger at you because you're not where you need to be. All right. Um, to be in good working order. I mean, restore me. We as spiritual, we, God graces us to um, help adjust and fit people back into the good working order, okay? To, to cause people to be fully functional in God's purpose, all right? Fully functional. Here we go. One more verse. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 5.18, all right? 5.17 says, you know, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, old things that pass away, all things that become new. It's talking about your salvation, okay? So you're saved. You're a new creation. You're in Christ. Praise the Lord. Verse 18, it continues, now all things are of God who has reconciled us, reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This is the ministry. This is the job description of the local church, the ministry of reconciliation that we are called to serve humanity in restoring favor to them, to change uh, people that are in the world and in sin from enmity with God to becoming friends with God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. We are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. We are in Christ, Christ is in us reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. There it is. This is my last point. The church must be restorative. The church must be restorative. Hope land. That's who we are. We are restorative. We restore people to God. We reconcile them to, we bring them to the reconciler, Christ. 
That is our heart. That is what we do. That is who we are. And that that is how we do what we do. We are restorative. If we preach return, God will restore. That's our message, return. Return, repent, return to God and he will restore. Repentance always creates restoration. Here it is, healthy, healthy churches have stories of people's lives being restored. Healthy churches, that's the fruit. Hopeland, you who are spiritual, restored. There ought to be stories that we can look around and say, man, this person is growing in their faith. This person has been restored to God. This person has gotten ministered to. This person has come back to Jesus. This person has come to Jesus. Healthy churches have stories of people's lives being restored. Love for God being restored. People's spiritual lives being restored. That is what healthy churches do. Churches must be, and they are called to be, restorative. Praise God. So with that said, I want to lead you in a prayer. If you're out there and you need to come to Jesus right now for the first time, or if this is after a lapse, I want to restore you to your Father. I want to restore you to your Heavenly Father. And I want you to repeat this simple prayer after me. All right? Say this with me. Say, Father God, I come to you a sinner. I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. I ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If that's you and you prayed that prayer, I rejoice with you. I celebrate with you. And I want to give you a devotional uh, seven-day Bible study. It's digital. I'll send you the link. And simply text the word GROW if you want to grow in your faith. Text GROW to 323-405-3232. Once again, text GROW to 323-405-3232. It's now time to give. Um, I wanted to share this verse with you. If you want to pull up your Bible to Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 12. And I'm going to read this in the message version. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know all. Run to God, run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your every bone will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will burst, your wine vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't, don't sulk under his loving correction. It's the child he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. So this is just words of encouragement as we start the new year to give your first fruits. The tithe is something that we do to remember that our all our provision comes from the Father. And this is our way to say thank you and to give back. So if you are going to give with us, text HOPELAND to 77977 and let me pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your provision. We thank you for this brand new year. I pray for every single heart that is giving today, Lord. I pray that you multiply it, Lord, and that you do whatever you want with it, Father. We welcome you into this new year. Uh, we love you, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, Hopeland Church, we have two announcements coming up. First announcement is prayer and fasting starts today. Uh, we're going to start after lunch, and it's only going to be a week, so it's going to end next Sunday. Uh, please check our Instagram and our Facebook for all of the fasting details. And uh, happy fasting, Hope and Church. Second announcement is the sign up for Hope Group start today as well. So please text the word groups to 323-405-3232 to the link for the sign up. Find a group, get connected. We encourage you to grow your faith and walk in freedom and uh, just grow closer to God. Have a good week, Copeland Church.
prayer and fasting starts today. Nah, I don't even know what I'm doing, dog. That's a spiritualist. <laughs> Somos personas espirituales. <laughs> Cheers. Bloopers, how's the bloopers? I was going good to that part, dude.